Hi Sarah, thanks for speaking to me today. Would you mind telling me a little bit about your background and your current role please? I was in terms of a GP and then I moved into health communications because I realised that I could fit my surgery, see 20 people in a day and perhaps get 20 health messages out there. But if I um, spent that day writing an article which was published in a, a broadsheet newspaper, it might have been read by 2 million people, I've potentially got 2 million health messages out there. So um, that's what I do now. And I'm, also, I'm editor of your wellness magazine and I have a column in Prima and I've written over 50 popular health books. And what interests you the most about being a health journalist? I think it's the uh, ability to put sometimes quite difficult concepts into simple language and to give people information which they can use to improve their own health and well-being really. Um, there's a lot of good information out there on the web. Um, there is some bad information as well uh, and hopefully by writing widely, people can um, pick up some tips which they might find helpful. In your opinion, what have been the biggest stories over the years for the pharma and healthcare industries? I think probably one of the biggest stories was the um, recognition of a link between smoking and um, diseases like cancer and heart disease, etc. And with the ban now on smoking um, in public places, uh, already we're starting to see rates of death and illness related to smoking decreasing. So I think that's been a major health story. What's the craziest health story you've ever reported on? Uh, I think it probably has to be the Hollywood celebrities who try to maintain a, a low weight by eating Kleenex tissue to get rid of hunger <laughs> pain. <laughs> There's another interesting one as well that's recently written about. Um, we used to talk about medieval practice of using leeches to draw out so-called bad blood and we used to do that with frying on and stop in the 19th century. But it's now recognised that people who regularly donate blood uh, actually have a reduced iron load in the body and significantly lower blood pressure, improved cholesterol and glucose balance, reduced risk of heart disease. So it may be that uh, if the leeches had been applied judiciously and not overused, maybe they could do some good. As editor of your wellness magazine, what have you found to be the biggest health concerns that people write into you about? I think it has to be about weight and the ability to not successfully lose weight despite being on a diet. And lots of people do find that they cut back on food, they try to exercise more, and their weight just sticks, they don't seem to go down. I think that is a, a major concern for a lot of people. Has the rise in social media affected your way of working? I don't really have time to use it very much, to be honest. Um, I did register with Facebook, and I have the other to go on to that now. I occasionally use Twitter if there's an interesting new nutritional medicine paper that I'd like to bring people's attention to, then I'll put a link to that on Twitter. But um, I can see that it's very popular with a lot of people, but um, for those that are very time poor, uh, such as myself, I'm not sure that it, it, it's that useful. What do you think is next for the health industry? I think it has to be anti-aging and life extension and the recognition that we are all starting to live longer and we want to maintain a healthy long-term um, lifespan so that if we are living longer, we're both physically and mentally uh, healthy. Thanks, Sarah. It's been great to hear your thoughts.